And we begin this 1030 half hour with an update on Ian. It is still over Florida right now, losing a little bit of strength now that the eye is over land. We uh, saw the storm make landfall earlier today. At one point, the storm uh, was just two miles per hour away from being a category five. It was up to 155 miles an hour, but then at landfall, uh, the estimates are that the winds were at 150 miles an hour. They came down just a little bit, but still that's a strong category four. It moved in near the Fort Myers area earlier this afternoon. The official landfall was at 305 today. Now we're watching the center of this circulation. We're seeing that eye kind of breaking up a little bit. That's evident here on the radar and satellite imagery, but that's moving over land. And what's happening is the warm water, that warm Gulf water is the fuel source for that storm. That's what feeds it. But now that it's over land, we've taken that source away. And so that's why it is showing signs of weakening. But still, it is classified as a category two hurricane, still hurricane strength right now. On the west side of this and some of these bands we have coming out, there's a tornado watch in effect. There is a chance that that could, uh, you know, cause or spawn some rotation there with some tornadoes. Now we expect it to maintain hurricane strength overnight and then early in the morning and through the day tomorrow, it does get downgraded to a tropical storm uh, by afternoon. It should be around 65 miles an hour. When it goes below 75 miles an hour at 74 or below, that's when it's going to be a tropical storm. Then we expect it to move back out over the water just south of Daytona Beach, hang out over water for a little bit and then make another landfall here near the Georgia South Carolina line. And we're waiting for at any moment for a new advisory to come in. Uh, this usually comes in. It's the 11 o'clock official advisory where we'll see this track change a little bit. If that shifts more over to the east, it might take that center of the tropical storm more over a little closer to the Charleston area. So we'll be waiting for that for you at 11 o'clock tonight. Now the remnants move up toward the north and fall apart. So that really puts us on the good, the better side of the storm where our impacts here in North Georgia and Metro Atlanta are actually coming down a little bit. But we have to focus first on the Georgia coastline as we expect that next landfall to come in near the Georgia South Carolina line. We have a tropical storm warning in effect for the Georgia coast that extends up to the north of Charleston. Also a hurricane watch in effect because as that moves back out over water, it could get back up to hurricane strength. That's not out of the question. We're not seeing that officially yet, but something that we have to consider there. And then the tropical storm watch extends up to the Georgia South Carolina line up to the Augusta area. Now we also have a storm surge warning in effect for the Georgia coast and up north of Charleston as well, and that's as the storm moves in with that wind and that forward motion of that, it's going to spread a wall of water in uh, maybe one to three feet in some spots. There, there could be some areas on the Georgia coast where we can see six foot storm surge there. That's indicated by the orange, and we are seeing a little bit of that orange mixing in from Savannah a little bit to the south here. But then when you get closer to Brunswick and down towards St. Mary's, it's more of the one to uh, three foot storm surge totals there. So that could cause beach erosion, coastal flooding. So a lot to watch with this system as we have yet another landfall for it to make. And that would be near the Georgia South Carolina line there on the coast. So based on uh, the tracks that we're seeing right now, this is what we're thinking. We'll see our impacts here in Metro Atlanta uh, with the rain and the wind. Now, we're saying up to two inches in the metro area, but I really think the two inch totals would be more east metro and then the lower totals that maybe a half inch would be west metro. Uh, so the farther west you go, the less rain you're going to get. The more to the east you go, the more rain you're going to get. Maybe even two to four inches over in East Georgia and into South Carolina. We do expect some winds, 10 to 20 mile an hour winds sustain most likely Friday night into early on Saturday and then some higher gusts too, maybe up to around 30 mile per hour wind gusts. And we really think the severe weather threat, as we were showing you, with these landfalling tropical systems, you can all often get tornadoes in some of those bands. And I think that would be more over into South Carolina. Here's a look at the latest modeling that we have from our spaghetti models that consensus showing it going back out over water and then making another landfall close to the Georgia South Carolina line.